Alright, welcome back to another track guide at Mid-Ohio VMX5. Drop a comment below if you have any questions, or if you want to have your lap analyzed, I'm happy to do that. The B-Lap aisle is going to be in the link in the description. If the tutorial is helpful, don't forget to drop a comment, like the video, subscribe if you want to see more track guides in the Miatas. All right, so this is the analysis of uh, Mid-Ohio and the Miatas. You can see I, I set myself up to be good for just a really fast run down the front straight just to get a hot lap. So for qualifying, you might need to give up a little bit of time to set your lap up back there. We'll let, run, let it run through turn one, and we'll take a look at how this goes here. Okay, so looking at turn one, this is a incredibly difficult corner because there's a lot of patience involved, and with new drivers, there's a couple major things that I think people are going to make mistakes with. One is going to be trying to do braking and steering at the same time. One thing that I like to do through this corner is I like to load the car up on turning before doing the braking input. One of the things that you can make a big mistake with is not settling the platform of the car, then stabbing the brake to get the turn in. And what that can do is just cause an over rotation. You can spin the car. So I like to ride that inside the low curb, make sure the platform is stable and a lot of patience on throttle. So you can see going through this corner, it's right now I do my turn in, then I start to lift off the gas and I hold the gas a little bit as I ride a tiny bit of brake. My aim is this yellow line on the inside here. I want to ride up that curb without unsettling the car too much. So we go back. We hit this curb, now I start feed back into the throttle, and what we want to do is realistically ride this curb all the way through the corner, and then slowly roll back into 100%. So you can see, we go from about 40% up to 65, 70%, and then back to 100. Now, we want to use all the road on the exit. We hit this curbing, so if we look at the rear chase, this is going to be just about touching the grasp. So that was a pretty decent run through this corner, but there's one actual trick that I found that's a little bit faster, but a lot less consistent. So I do want to jump to that now, and it's not something I necessarily recommend in the race, possibly for qualifying. So, as I mentioned before, this is not something I technically recommend, but it seems like if you downshift the second gear and pretty much money shift the car, what'll happen is the, the back end of the car kicks out when you do the money shift. So I found actually seven hundredths of a second through this corner by downshifting to second, going right back to third, and then pinning it after the car rotates from the the uh, downshift well over red line. So we'll let this play through, and I'll kind of talk through why it works and why I don't recommend doing this in a race. But for more advanced guys who want to really push the limits, maybe do a risky qualifying lap on lap two with the safe one already in the bank, this might be something you want to give it a shot. So if we back this up and we watch the rear chase cam and right about here you see the downshift. So watch the number right here. You see it go from three to two back to three. 
So we're going into this corner and you can watch the car pivot as soon as I do that downshift and then back to three. So what's happening is it kind of points the nose of the car a little bit more to the inside and allows you to get back on throttle a lot sooner and carry more speed through the corner. Uh, when I was aiming to get a, a po the best possible lap, I tried that a lot of times and it didn't work most of them, but it was certainly faster when I got it right for the race. I don't recommend it, but I thought it was a really cool trick because this might help you get down to, you know, sub 135.5s, 135.4s. Uh, really quick lap times, but definitely less consistent, a lot riskier. So keyhole is definitely one of the most challenging and frustrating corners on this track as well. It's not too difficult to do okay, but it's very hard to nail. Um, so going into this corner, there's a couple references I definitely want to be sure of. So while we're looking at keyhole, I typically find my braking reference is going to be the 100 board as it disappears behind the A pillar. But if we look right about here, so as the 100 board disappears behind my pillar, I'm getting onto the brakes. I'm going to brake very hard. This is uphill going into this braking zone. Uh, something you might not notice on simulator, but in real life, this is a moderately decent sized hill. And what that means is you're going to be able to brake very hard into the corner. As you get to the top of the hill or up towards the curb here, it's going to start to crest. The car is going to get light, so you have to bleed off the brakes very quickly. So what you see here is I'm heavy on the brakes, and I'm right about here. It falls off a lot quicker than you normally would for a trail brake, and that has to do with track now going downhill. So we have to do a very, very light trail brake just to rotate the nose. And what you'll see, there's actually a repaved section on the inside here, right here. This tends to have more grip than the surrounding surface of the track. So that's why I'm not going super wide to try to point the nose for the exit. This was the uh, optimal split for, for me up meadow. And you can see it's just, I'm feeding back into the gas, back to 100%. I'm on the grippier part of the surface. I got the rotation done early in the corner without going too wide. And now what you want to focus on is the, the yellow curb on exit. You want to use all of it. You want to even brush the grass a little bit. As you're doing this, what you probably notice is you're either doing one of two things. One, you're going to have a lot of room for error on the outside, which means you can roll back into the throttle sooner in this corner. Or two, you're going to constantly be running wide, hitting the grass. And that means you're either too spiky on the throttle. So you can see here, I roll into the throttle and then it feeds back up to 100%. I didn't just go from zero to 100 and stomp on the gas pedal. That'll cause a lot of understeer very quickly. So rolling into the throttle through this corner is super helpful to avoid that understeer. And the second thing is you're probably doing overzealous getting back on throttle too soon. So watching back through turn two, this keyhole, you can see I kind of roll back into the throttle here. As we're rolling into the throttle, I'm using all the track on exit. If you want to look at the rear chase cam, um, I have a little bit of room over here, but you really want to even brush that grass, get a really good run down the straight, use every bit of track that you can, use all the curb. And so your references are, if you're off into the grass or into the gravel, you got on the throttle too soon or too, too spiky, too sharp. Or if you're way over here and there's a whole car width of space to the curb, that means you're just not being aggressive enough on exit. And that'll give you a really good reference to see, should you push harder or should you back it off a little bit and be a bit more calm? Run down this straight, fairly simple. Aim for that red Honda sign, cut some distance, stay tight over on the right side here to these cones, and then open it back up. We're gonna aim for the braking zone, about 300 going into this corner. So for me, I passed the 300. The reference that I use now is the 200 board for when I should be like mashing the brake, kind of 80, 90%. So I'm feeding back up to it for starters. 300 is probably going to be where you start and then push it further and further until you get close to the 200. So here, one of the biggest tricks that I have um, is I like downshift very aggressively. I like downshift early in this corner. What that does is it puts a lot of stress over the rear end, makes the car a lot more likely to rotate so I can get the nose wrapped around this corner. You're going to want to use a lot of curb on the inside going through turn four. Set yourself up to be open through five, and then we'll talk a lot more about turn five because for beginners, that's where you're gonna make the most mistakes. So you can see 80, 85% brake threshold, tackle that curve early on the throttle, 
through here, very cautious. Now you can see, before I get on throttle, I try to point the car pretty straight, and then as I crest the hill, I'm gonna open the steering to, to be a, a neutral steer or a zero steer, because if you don't, this is an easy place to spin. So right here, I drive straight as I crest the hill, and I correct, get far back left to open this corner up, and then focus on getting through this as best as you can. But one thing that I do really wanna stress, going through this corner, let me back it up. So we're, we're flat here. We just kind of drag brake, get the nose turned in. And now, now it's about rolling back into the throttle. You can see how slowly I'm picking this up. I'm not stabbing the gas. Now, what a lot of people are going to do, they're gonna make a huge mistake going to first gear here. If you do a downshift to first gear, the car is gonna wanna spin. Don't downshift to first, keep it in second. Avoid that uh, unsettling of the rear end with that downshift. And here you can see I actually bleed off the throttle. So as I'm cresting the hill, I'm turning less, pointing the wheel straight, using less throttle to ask for less rotation, and making sure I get through this corner safe. And as soon as the car starts to settle after I crest the hill, we go right back to 100% throttle. Boom. So you can see the car gets planted, it gets stable. Now I start to turn more and go 100% throttle. What a lot of beginners will do here, number one, cold tires. Everybody spins here and wrecks. Um, number two, people will not bleed off the gas here. So they'll think, okay, well, I'm at 70%, let's go to 100. And then they get a big sweet drift right here. Well, then they go into this corner and when they break for this corner, they go sailing off because they've overheated the rear tires. So that's one really huge trick for mid-Ohio. It's with, with all of the elevation changes, there's a lot of overheating of the rear tires. If you have a drift, if you have a spin, if you have a big slide, the tires are going to be very hot for one to two, maybe three corners after. So be mindful. Drive the next few corners easy until the surface temperatures come back down. Otherwise, you're going to be prone to spinning again. So let's back. All right, so this is post-video editing version of me. Um, this is a really good example of what I think a lot of people are going to do in turn five right here. So I wanted to come back, do a little bit of a replay, and try to explain what I think the biggest common mistakes are in this track. So walking through this corner, we're going to have a pretty big threshold break. We've got high high rev downshifts, then entering this corner. The big mistake I think a lot of people are going to make is entering this corner right here, and they're gonna downshift while turning, while braking. So those are three things that separately all can cause more rotation and upset the balance of the car. So what you're seeing right now, um, while I'm lifting off the throttle, um, adding the brake, and I'm doing a downshift, and immediately after doing this, you can see the car is completely gone, and it goes away immediately. So I want to put this in the video, edit that in because I think this is something that a lot of you guys are going to do. So just be very cautious and be mindful of the fact that if you're going to add the uh, brake while steering and doing some downshifting, it's too many inputs. So what you need to do is sort of stagger them, load up suspension before you do downshifts. Um, be mindful of how you're using the throttle, how you're using the brake, and avoid a situation like this during the race and during your qualifying sessions. So again, we're going flat out. Heavy threshold braking, a lot of early downshifts, tackle the curb early on the throttle, set yourself up. Little tiny breaker here, easy on the throttle, open the steering, back on it, get far left. So even here, this is a huge mistake a lot of people make. Let's go to the rear chase. I, I try to be tight on that grass. Get as tight as the to the grass as possible to open up this corner as much as you can and then use all of that curb on the inside. Now from here, it's flat out all the way, cut distance, tackle that grass even on left there. This is going into madness now, and very cautious again over this crust. So we back up and look at the zone as a whole. So again, through here, a lot of what you're doing is 100% flat out. So this is going through the S's and then going into turn nine, which is referred to as madness. Um, so going through these, it's all about cutting distance, not scrubbing speed, and, and just being as quick as possible. So get 100% on throttle and figure the rest out later. So you can see I'm not set up. I'm not way over to the right to hit an apex. I'm all the way on the left side of the track because I can make through this flat. So right now it's about as much exit speed as possible. And you can see here, you can even run up onto the grass here as this curb ends. I cross over through the grass, cutting as much distance as I possibly can. Now, going over the crest, this is totally flat out. I'm not necessarily aiming for anything specific, but what I really want to think about in this second is to be tight on this left curb, because this is a huge problem that I see a lot of people making. So let's go to the chopper cam and take a look at where the car is positioned. So I'm pretty far over, almost running up onto this curb. Now, if we look at what a lot of other people do, they'll position their car over here, 
And what that's doing is it's going to make the corner that you're going into extremely tight. So you want to be over almost running up onto this yellow curbing here if you can safely, because what it does is it opens up the this corner to be a much shallower radius, which will make it easier for you to rotate the car and get through it. If you're further over to the right, now you have a sharper corner while cresting a hill, and it makes it a lot more difficult and a lot slower exit speed. And again, as we crest this hill, very similar to turn five, you're going to have to anticipate that the car is going to get light as the hill falls off. So as you're going up the hill, you're very loaded, you have a lot of grip. As the car crests that hill, you lose a lot of grip, the rear end starts to come out. So as you go over that hill, you need to be, uh, you need to anticipate that the car is going to get light in the rear, so you might have to steer a little bit to the left to catch it. So you can see me do that here. So I'm flat, turning right, go back 100%, now the car's light, I steer back to the left, and I stay in it the whole way. So looking at this, turn 10, turn 11, uh, going in here, obviously extremely close to this wall. Just about scrape that mirror on the wall here. Going back to the cockpit camera, you can see I'm starting to turn in very hard. So I'm, I'm turning to the left. Right now, what I want to do is avoid turning and braking at the same time. So I want to load the suspension up before I hit the brakes to avoid any understeer, ABS, or spins. Now, what you'll see as well is... I'll kind of bleed off the gas slowly and then drag the brake a little bit through the corner. And I really want to ride that inside curb as much as possible and then be aggressive and use all of the exit curb, being mindful of running into the grass on the as that curb on the right ends because you will get a one act for touching that. That was what ruined a lot of my other fast laps going for this. So you can see, ride that curb on the left, back 100% throttle, use all of the yellow curb on exit there. And then we want to be treating carousel very differently from what you might expect so a lot of people if i back up right now a lot of people will position their car well over to the left to try to think about opening it up carousel is not a traditional corner in that sense so when you're doing mid-ohio so many people are going to go track left try to open up carousel but it's completely unnecessary what you're doing through this as the hill falls off it's very easy to rotate the car so you're not going to use a lot of braking force um, you can see I'm using maybe 50 or 60% braking force at most. As the hill falls off, you're using less. And then as the car loads up on the suspension, you can use a bit more. Um, but it's all about rotating the car and getting a very, very early exit and being 100% flat through 12 and 13. So on the exit of 12 through 13, it's all about threading the needle, keeping it 100% flat and avoiding those one axes. So you can see here, I'm going with the trial brake right now drag that brake, roll onto the throttle, 100%. I get a little bit too much wheel spin, but it was still very fast. Avoid hitting too much of the curb on the left, because what can happen is you can get a one-act there. Um, one thing I will say, this was the fastest uh, sector, final sector that I had. So coming through 12, 13, that was the quickest one that I had. But you can obviously see I didn't use all the track exits. So if you're talking about race pace, this would be great for a qualifying lap, but not the best for race pace, because I didn't have a huge amount of speed going down the straight. I, had a, I gave up a lot of time uh, gaining on the entry, but I'd be losing down the straight. But given the fact that this was the end of my qualifying lap, per se, it, it didn't matter much, and that was my quickest final sector. For a race, you might want to focus a little bit more on positioning the car for a safe entry with less wheel spin and utilizing all of the track and the curbing on the right. But overall, that is a lap of mid-Ohio. I think a few major talking points here that are uh, necessary to go over. It's be careful of the crests, especially on cold tires. Be mindful of any inputs where you're doing dual inputs. So for example, if you're turning and braking at the same time, or if you're turning and braking and then adding a downshift at the same time, especially over a crest, those are easy ways for beginners and experienced drivers to spin their car, or at the very least, get the rear end out, uh, do a slide, do a drift, overheat the tires. So that leads into the next major point. Be careful of overheating the back tires. So if you do a downshift and it causes the rear end to slide, or if you enter too fast and you have to catch something, or maybe coming through, say, turn five, you stomp into the gas and drift as you press that hill, it's going to overheat the tires significantly for the next two to three corners, or maybe more. So be very cautious of that, because if you go into the next corner at the same pace as you would on qualifying setup, 
it's it's going to be very late. You're probably going to spin the car. Hopefully this track guide was useful. If it helped you guys out, don't forget to comment below. Uh, leave a comment. I'll take a look at any of your laps. Um, feel free to download the B-Lap file as well if you want to race against my ghost. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these tutorials. We should be putting out more for the MX-5 um, and the GR86 and possibly some GT4s coming soon. So keep an eye on the channel. We're going to be putting those out for you. And uh, let me know if there's anything else I can do to be assistance.